Welcome to Education Forum. I'm Herman Badillo, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the City University. The improvement of education affects all New Yorkers. This program will focus on the key educational challenges, issues and challenges before us all. My guest today is Gaspar Caperton, who is the President of the College Board. Uh, Governor Caperton is a graduate of the University of North Carolina. He has run a very successful insurance business, and then he ran and was elected uh, governor of West Virginia uh, for two terms, from 1988 to 1996. He then came to Columbia University, where he uh, established a center for education and government, and he was uh, elected uh, president of the college board last year. And governor, the reason I wanted you here is because as you know, I've recently become chairman of the Board of Trustees of the City University, and one of the things that I pushed for and uh, gotten approved uh, with Chancellor Matthew Goldstein is to establish that beginning this coming September of the year 2000, every student in the four-year colleges of the City University will have to take the SATs. That's a new idea, and I wanted you as the president of the College Board to tell the public uh, what are the SATs and what do they measure and why do you think it's important that students take them? Well, the SAT has uh, been in, in use for almost 50 years. Now, the test that we did 50 years ago and what we do today has always continued to be improved and upgraded. But every uh, important institution in this country, I think, uses the SAT or a similar kind of test in order to best select and best uh, place students that come into their, uh, into their uh, college or university. Are there comparable uh, tests in other countries in the world? Uh, you know, there are, but I think the, that the SAT is sort of the gold standard. It's mm -hmm. what every people come from all over the world to come to see us and see how the SAT works. And the SAT is, is a test that was developed as a predictor of success in college in the first year. Now it is, uh, some people tried to, who, who would be against your use in the SAT at CUNY or against us in other places, oftentimes misrepresent what the test is. It is not a, it is not a gate. It isn't a test that's created to keep people from uh, coming into a school. It's, it's a test that is created to clearly show how well a student can do in that first year and and to give you a sense about what it's it's a, it's a really a way of setting higher standards okay now let's say uh, this program is being watched by some students who are applying to CUNY and who will be taking the test in September uh, what uh, what score should they have in each of the categories well, I don't, I don't think that that's a matter of what score they should have. That uh, institution. So that's what they worry about, as yeah. you know. Well, I, I think a student, you know, what is, the, what is the real tragedy is a student coming to an institution uh, not to prepare to succeed at that institution. And they come in one day and they go out the next day and they have been defeated because they've not been successful. Uh, we all recognize the importance of of, of admissions and to try to get as many students into colleges that we can. But we don't want to, number one, we don't want to bring them in for them to fail, just to bring them in and have their names on, on and them to pay tuition and then they leave uh, failing. We want them to come in and be successful. Um, I think that what you've said in a very loud way when you've asked for people to take the SAT is, number one, that CUNY is going to have standards that it expects students to come with a certain uh, level of ability to, to succeed. Exactly. Well, obviously, that, that's the purpose. I mean, that's the reason I went. I'm, I myself am a graduate of the City College, and uh, as you may know, uh, I came here from Puerto Rico when I was about 12 years old and couldn't speak the language at all, but I had the opportunity uh, to uh, move ahead in this society because uh, at, the, at that time we had very high standards at City College. Um, but then, of course, and until recently, we didn't have the SAT test. I was admitted on the basis of my high school average, which, by the way, was very high. In those days, uh, 
standards were so high, you had to have something like an 89 average in high school to get in. But if a student is applying now, what would be considered a good uh, SAT score? Well, th that can vary a lot. But let me tell you what I think is really important, is that admissions people should not, don't just look at the SAT scores as a way to admit or to place a student in a school. They look at that also, they also look at many other things. They look at what kind of, the, what their grades were. Uh, they look at what their leadership capacities are, what they've, what, what, wh where they've come from, what they've done, what their background on, what they've overcome. But what the SAT does as much as anything is an A from one school might not be what an A is from another school. Mm -hmm. And so it gives uh, an admissions officer the opportunity to look at what statistically is shown from this test, the person's uh, capacity and ability to succeed at a school that they choose to go to. So it helps them help the student pick the right school and it helps them see where they can be successful. So uh, the, you know, a test score, I mean, for me to say what that test score should be is not, I mean, Harvard has one test score. Uh, well, well what, what test score does Harvard have? To take well, I don't know that. That's that is strictly within the admissions office. But the test office. scores range from from what? From zero I, to uh, sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred. That doesn't go from zero, but yeah. sixteen hundred. But what you what you find is that a, a, a play, Let's just take Harvard as as a, an example of one of the most difficult schools in the country to get through. Mm -hmm. uh, they they don't choose students just because of their SAT scores. They they turn students down that have a perfect SAT score. They're looking at a student body that will meet the needs of that school, that has diversity, uh, that has uh, athletes as, as well as scientists in it, uh, that have women and male, that have an ethnic balance, because that's all important to the, the vigor and the importance of, of what that student body has. But they're, taking, they're picking students out that come from Alabama or West Virginia or New York City or Chicago, they don't know when they look at those grade scores, what does an A really mean? So one of the, one of the things they also want to do is to see these SAT scores. Now there's another very powerful thing about the SAT scores, is that if you look at what SAT scores are from various schools, that is probably the greatest indicator of the inequality of our school system in this country, which I think is one of the unfairest things is that some students don't get the, the chance for an education that they should get. Well, the problem is that the reputation of the SATs is quite different from what you have described because uh, students that I've talked to and people that I've talked to uh, feel that uh, the SATs are very important in order to um, have students be admitted to a particular institution and students worry about it. They, they they practice for it. I don't know if it's possible to do so, but um, uh, they are concerned about the SATs and, uh, and uh, therefore they consider the SATs uh, to in effect be a decisive uh, measure whether they will be admitted to a particular institution. But you say that it isn't or shouldn't be so. No, I say it's a very, imp I think it should be important, but it should not be the only thing that's used to look at a student and their potential to do well in school and to succeed in life. I'm saying that it is not, it is not the only criteria that anybody should ever use, but a very, a, a very, very important criteria to be looking at where students go to school. Is it possible to study for the SATs? The, the very mm -hmm. best way to do well on your SAT scores is to do well day to day in your schoolwork. What does the SAT, what does an SAT really and in its, in its very simplest form, what does it do? It takes the knowledge that you have in your head and it allows you to answer questions and use your ability to critically think, to, to take the information you have and, and answer a question. Now there's no way you get that better than to study your history course today and do well in your history course and your English course and your math course. And the more difficult the courses you, you take and the more, uh, the more you study, the better you're going to do on an SAT uh, course. Now there's, there is tutoring that you can do that can always prepare. Anybody can practice for any test mm -hmm. and do better than they haven't practiced. But there is nothing 
that does that that helps a person do well on an SAT course than the day-to-day -day work they do in school. There was an article in the New York Times just recently that talked about the SAT scores of Bill Bradley and George W. Bush, and it said that uh, Bill Bradley only got 485 out of a possible 800, and George Bush got a uh, gentlemanly, gentlemanly 566, and yet. Uh, uh, they were candidates for the leader of uh, this country and the free world. So that, therefore, it doesn't necessarily mean that a great score uh, will uh, bring about uh, real leadership. Well, I, I think that that's exactly what I tried to say earlier to you. If you only chose people based upon their SAT scores, that would not be sufficient. But when you look at, if you took it, let, let's uh, let's let's take the senator from from New Jersey. If you look at what his record was in high school as a world-class athlete, as a leader in his school, as a person that did all of the things that he did and had the determination, you know that a person like like that is you want that person in your student body. What about George Bush? Some people say that he got into Yale because of his the connections of his father. Well, you know, I, I, I wasn't in, uh, on that admissions uh, program, but, uh, uh, you know, I, got, I went to the University of North Carolina, uh, and I, I don't, don't, didn't have high SAT scores. Why? I'm a dyslexic, so mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't do really well on tests. But I, in my high school, I was a, a leader in that school. I was a good athlete. I worked very hard. I did a lot of things. When, when my SAT scores were looked at a... At a uh, along with other things, then I was acceptable for admissions there. I didn't graduate with an A uh, 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 at the top of my class like you always did. I looked at the, the wonderful yeah, records you, were, you have. You were a very successful businessman. You had the 10th largest private insurance firm in the country. Yes, sir. Well, I'm, I mean, I, that's what I'm saying is that there's a lot of people. To say nothing of being elected governor. <laughs> well, that, that's what I think we all realize, that you don't have to have straight A's to be president of the United States or to be a governor, or to be a, a, a wizard on Wall Street. But what we're really, what we're focusing on today, and what I think is important, is that, that we want to have high standards. We want to get students into, the, into schools where they can succeed. And the SAT score is a way to raise those standards, and it's a good judge of how people can succeed. Oh. I think that what I said earlier, but how do you, you asked me the critical question. How does somebody do well on the SAT scores? They do well because they've studied hard and have gained a lot of knowledge. Let me give you a good example. Okay, but hold it. We have uh, some announcements because I want to get to the question of why is it that uh, African Americans, Hispanics, and women do not seem to do so well on the SATs? What are you going to take? Algebra. 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 Algebra! If no one's explained how algebra, geometry, and calculus can improve your future, call NACME. We'll tell you. One of the reasons lions roar is to warn threatening bachelor males from other prides to stay away from their young. Here, a lion cub gets a lesson in proper roaring from its father. Teaching this behavior is not just crucial to the pride, but also to the survival of the species. Just a reminder how important it is for fathers to spend time with their children. We're back again with Gaston Caperton, the former governor of West Virginia and the president of the college board, which among other things administers the SAT test. Now, the problem is that uh, there are serious challenges to the SATs because it has been determined that uh, African Americans, Hispanics, and women do not do well in the SATs. What is your response to the challenges of the SAT as a valid test? First of all, I want to make one thing very, very clear. The SAT is not a biased test. Uh, the differences between how men and women d do it there's only one very slight place that that is, which was in, in the mathematics, but just statistically, very statistically, and, and, and research can show you why there's a little difference in it. 
it's, it's too complicated to explain here, but basically, if you want to really say it, there is no difference between men and women on the test. Well, well why is it said that the women do not do as well in the test? There, but that's not true. That's true. Not, not true not at true. all. No, okay. Well, that was surprising to me. It is not true. Yeah. There, uh, there's one little teeny place in math where that, was a, that occurred, but statistically, it, it's as of no significance. Okay, now let's take up uh, African Americans and Hispanics. There is nothing in the test that is biased. The, the results that you find from Hispanics and African Americans is a result of the inequality in an education system. As I said to you earlier, if a student has not uh, had vigorous courses, or let's do it in a positive way, a student has vigorous courses, a student studies hard, uh, you will find that that same student in a, that doesn't study hard and doesn't, do, doesn't have vigorous courses will not do well in the SAT. The one who has the opposite will do well. So it's really not a bias in the test. It is a, a reflection of the education system okay. that a student But then comes why from. is it that so many leaders of the African American and Hispanic communities say that it is a bias in the test? Why can't we turn that around and blame the school system, which is what I do in New York City, we have a lot of problems at the city university, but I've consistently pointed out that the problem begins in uh, pre-kindergarten or the first grade, because in the city of New York, we have strange system, which is called social promotion, where everybody passes. And now, after a period of many years, we're finally going to get rid of social promotion and begin to have real standards. But somehow, the SATs have gotten caught in the fight where they are accused of by uh, the very uh, ones who uh, would, uh, uh, should benefit from it, African-American and Hispanic leaders, they're saying that's the SAT that is wrong. The SAT has been in this country for about 50 years now. It continues to be improved. It is used by the finest universities and colleges across this country, uh, ones who have have a leadership role in wanting to admit and having diversity in their student body. They would not use the SAT if it was a biased test. It is not a biased okay, test. Okay, so if the problem is not the SATs, but the quality of the schools, then um, what can you and the college board uh, do to point out how the schools can be improved in those areas that have a high uh, percentage of African-American and Hispanic students? The, the mission of the College Board is to prepare, inspire, and connect students right. to college and opportunity. The preparation part of it is a part that we've put, we, we continue to put more and more focus on. Mm -hmm. As you know, the best standard and assessment program in the country is what we call advanced placement. We're making, a, which is, is, is courses uh, that are of, of, of a college standard basis where a student takes it in high school and then can go to college and get credit for that course they took in high school with a, an examination that is given across the country, a national examination, high, uh, very highest of standards. Now, what we are working at very hard now at the College Board is to be sure that AP is, is, in, is in every school in the country. Uh, the Secretary of Education recently announced that what his goal was that there would be at every school in the country that didn't have AP today would not only have, would put in one AP this year and each year for the next 10 years add an advanced placement program so every school in America would have as many as 10 AP courses. That, let me just finish. Yeah. That's a great goal. And why is the AP important in that program? And another enriching program that we have is called Pace Setter which is an, an advanced, ma it's an it's a enriched math, English, and Spanish program in which the, the heart and soul of that program is, the, the, is teacher instruction and, and, and training teachers. Uh, and where this really makes sense and where we can show you example after example in other systems is that what we call vertical teams where you begin to reach back and say, if you want to take an AP Physics course, in the eighth grade you better be taking a good math course and getting as many students into those courses as we can. So we're very interested in enriching students' curriculum, strengthening their, their coursework, 
doing everything we can so when they come to the SAT school test that they've done the work that gives them as high as possible score. Okay. Well, I'm interested in setting criteria by which we can measure the quality of the individual schools, particularly in elementary and secondary schools. Now, in the city of New York, we have some excellent high schools. In fact, some of the best high schools in the country, Bronx Science, Stuyvesant, uh, high schools which uh, have the largest percentage of Westinghouse scholarship students, for example. We also have some of the worst high schools, particularly in black and Hispanic areas. Is there a way or is anybody working on having some sort of criteria by which we could evaluate those of us who are leaders in our communities evaluate individual high schools and say that this high school is not performing and the students who graduate from those high schools will not be able to do well in college. Well, I, I think that that's, uh, that's not, doesn't take, it doesn't take, uh, uh, th those evaluations can be made fairly easily. You could take- But they're not done, that's well, the problem. Let me finish. You can, you can evaluate, if every student in, in the New York school system took SAT, uh, SATs, you could take that, that large number of SAT scores and you would be able to say, you could have, it would be a pretty good indicator of which, which, schools, uh, which schools were good, were, were, were students had better opportunities to, do, to succeed in college than others. Now that's not the, that's not, that's not what I'm, I'm not recommending that no, be wouldn't, done. Wouldn't that be, a, that might be what a good I think, idea. What why I why think wouldn't that be a good idea to have the high school students take the SATs in order to evaluate the quality of the high school? Well, I think that some places feel that that's very, that's, that's, that's an important thing. To most, so there are many states that want every student to take an SAT course. Uh, m first of all, it, it, it's, it's, it inspires people to go to college. It finds a lot of students who didn't know they were able to go to college. It also gives a, a, some, a, some very uh, strong statistics that let you know which schools are, are in, in large numbers, which schools are, are producing uh, college uh, students that are prepared and, and more ready to go to college. But I, I think that, that what, we're, what we're interested in, not only in, in the people who take SAT scores and what those scores are, but we also believe there, there are a n huge number of students who have the capacity and ability to go to college and succeed who are not getting the, the, the preparation early on, as you said, in preschool all the way through. So what we, what, where our focus is in really from, from uh, really right now, it's from high school forward to enrich those programs. We hope to soon be able to go back into junior highs and all, even back into grade schools. With you, this you goal, would do that through the college board? We would love to go back and, and, and have more impact on those students because our goal and mission is to get as many kids to go to college as possible. Well, that's what I would like to do. So how would you do this? Well, one of the one of the things is to take is is I said earlier is to take our pace setter program, our AP programs, be sure they're in schools, and then begin to go back into the earlier grades, beginning to prepare students to take that kind of rigorous course, so that the the, the ninth grade or the eighth grade math teacher understands that she's got to get her students to this point for them to go to the next point, to go to the next point, so they can take these rigorous courses. Also, that will. That will, that will enrich the teaching throughout the school, strengthen kids' expectations of what they do. We, we, we believe that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of students who never take the SAT score because the SAT test because they don't really think that they're college material, who are mater college material, who could get a thousand on, the, on, the, on an SAT score, which was, is certainly a, 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 a basis that says you are a uh, uh, successful, and I don't want to say that you can do under a thousand, you're not, but I mean, there's a lot of students, a lot of students that could find out that they are college material, and that's what you believe in, too. Yeah. Uh, what has been uh, your experience in getting the cooperation of the uh, local school boards to work with the students in the high schools and elementary and secondary schools? Well, you know, there's, there's, over, there's over three million students in America that take the SAT uh, that we give s three million SAT uh, examinations every year, and there's another probably a, a, there's another uh, group of tests called ACT tests that are given, yes. and uh, they probably do uh, 
probably uh, we do probably 60 percent of the tests that are given they give probably uh, 40 percent something like that so there's probably as many as five million tests that are given every year that's a big percentage of mm -hmm. students that are taking them across the country and in many school systems every student's taking them. But do the local school boards cooperate uh, with that? Operation? Well it's uh, the, indi the individual uh, chooses to take the the test it is it, it it's their choice in most places but it's certainly encouraged in most places. Because we developed a program here which is called College Now uh, and we got uh, the agreement of present chancellor uh, Harold Levy to go back into the high schools beginning in the ninth grade, test the students there so that we could help them in the ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade to ensure that when they graduated they would be ready for college work. But prior to that we had a previous chancellor, uh, Rudy Crew, who didn't want us to go into the high schools and we wouldn't cooperate and uh, previous chancellors before that uh, didn't want to allow us at the city university to be involved. That's well, the reason I asked. Well, I, ha I happen to be a, a, a great admirer of, uh, of Dr. Crew and think he did a remarkable job as, as chancellor. Uh, I might not agree with him on everything he did, but I happen to be a, a real admirer of his. Uh, we, are, we are in many school systems, we have a program called a PSAT, which is a sort mm -hmm. of a pre-SAT test right. that's given in the 10th grade. Uh, and we have many school systems now that have every student taking that to, as, a ta as a talent search and also as a way to see how they can, where students are and how they can better prepare them from the 10th on into, the, into, uh, into college. So what you're trying to do is something that makes sense to me, uh, but I don't, I, I won't, uh, I, I say that with great respect to uh, Rudy Cruz. No, I understand, but I'm glad to hear you have such a program because uh, uh, it's the kind of thing that we would like to implement as well. And I Unfortunately, know you're, we're out of oh, time. I'm sorry. So Thank we'll you very much. It's been a pleasure to be right. with you. Thank you.